Have you ever read the Bible alongside someone else and come away with a totally different interpretation about what it was saying? Have you ever gotten into an argument with someone about who Jesus is, why he's important, what it means to be a Christian, or this kingdom that he's announcing? Yeah, of course, so many of us have. But the interesting thing behind all of these questions is the question of authority. Who gets to say what is more true and what is less true? Who has the authority to make that call? Just this week, I was playing soccer, and look, I'm not great at soccer, I'm not terrible, I'm just a little bit out of shape, and we went for the ball with this other player, and we collided and fell to the ground. Both of us looked to the referee, expecting that he was gonna make a call in our favor, and he didn't. He waved us on and said, fair play, play on. We were a little bummed that he didn't make a call. But at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter what we think about the call, because we don't have authority to make that call. Only the referee has that authority. Now, in the Christian life, it's an interesting question to ask, who has the authority to make that call? Is it just left up to us and our own personal reading of scripture? Yes, we're filled with the Holy Spirit, and yes, we can read the Bible, even in English for ourselves. But what if someone else who's filled with the Holy Spirit reading the Bible in English disagrees with our interpretation? Who's to say who's right and who's wrong? Well, a really helpful way of understanding how we can approach the gospel and reading it clearly and authoritatively is to read the scriptures with the church. The scriptures belong to the church. In fact, if you think about it, it has come from an ancient and undivided and apostolic community of Christians empowered by the Lord himself to bring forward this message of the gospel to us. So when we approach this question of authority, we're actually approaching it in a way more beautiful way than just our own reading or what we think, but we're actually appealing to the apostles themselves, asking questions like, what did they think? What did the early church fathers think that scripture was saying to us? And when we read scripture in this way with the church, we arrive at a much closer understanding of the truth of what it's saying to us. Likewise, we can appeal to the tradition and see this great history of apostles, these apostles who made apostles. And in the first few hundred years of the church, even some really incredible statements about the essentials about what Christians believe and what it means to be a Christian, what it means to believe and put our trust in this triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And lastly, we can approach the scriptures and the tradition with reason as we reason with our Christian communities together, not only even immediately and presently, but also throughout history and throughout the world, we can reason together as a Christian community struggling to appropriate this truth of the gospel in every location, in every generation, and in every context. This is really interesting when we begin to think about how authority works in this message of the gospel that's come to us. And when you start pulling on the string of authority, you realize, man, this is way bigger than just what we believe or how we interpret the Bible. This has everything to do with things like, what are the sacraments and how are these authoritative means of grace from God to us? How does that all work? And who gets to say how we're governed? How the church responds to the injustices of the world behind all of these concerns are the, is the question, who gets to say? The question of authority. 